Hallelujah. Well, this morning, uh, I want to share with you just for a few moments about living a resurrection lifestyle. Amen. You know, God's called us to live a resurrection lifestyle. And, um, you know, it's because of the work that was done, not just uh, the day that he died, but the resurrection. It's a complete work. And, and we commemorate today uh, his death and his resurrection. The, all the things he experienced, he experienced willingly to provide for us the abundant life that we now have for all of eternity. And it belongs to you. Everything that he did for you belongs to you right now. In fact, I'll tell you this today, too. You know, a lot of times people only show up at church in, in the world. They only show up at church on Easter and Christmas. And, you know, uh, you know, that's great. You know, that's a wonderful thing. But you should not be living just for a Resurrection Sunday. You should be living a resurrection lifestyle. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It, should be, uh, it should be a daily part of your life because you just don't realize if you're, you know, just how much power you operate in. You have some serious oomph in your life. Everybody say oomph. <laughs> All right. Say it again. That felt good. Oomph. All right. That's good. Amen. You know, his death, his burial, and his resurrection was all a part of the plan of redemption. In fact, his resurrection gave back to you dominion and authority that rightfully belonged to the children of God that was given to Adam in the beginning. But Adam gave it up. Jesus got it all back. And he turned and gave it to each one of you when you asked him into when you asked him into your heart. Well, you know that means, folks, when you really get to it, Satan was defeated. He was conquered. He was placed under Jesus's feet, and therefore he is under whose feet? Our feet. My feet. Amen. Amen. Well, Colossians two fifteen tells us here, as we talk about living this resurrection lifestyle, this resurrection life. Uh, Proverbs two fifteen tells us this. Jesus triumphed, right? What did he, how did he triumph? Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, yeah. triumphing over them in it. Amen. He triumphed over the devil. All the principalities, all the powers, he triumphed over the kingdom of darkness. He disarmed everything. Yeah. He took it from them. Amen. I bet you hell shook real hard that moment. Can you imagine? Oh, better than Bruce Willis and Die Hard, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Amen. It was a bad day on that floor in hell. Because he took what belonged to you all along. He took it back. He paid your ransom so that you could be free from the curse. See, Jesus triumphed. You know, the devil has no power over you unless you yield to him. He has no authority in your life unless you give it to Him. And you guys, all of us here, we need to live in that finished work. We need to live uh, uh, in that finished work called resurrection power. Most Christians stop at the cross and they don't ever take full advantage of what Jesus gave to them. But you can. So today I want to give you four ways you can live in, in good power but in resurrection power power every day all right resurrection power four ways you can live in the, in resurrection power every day the first one's this number one you need to activate the resurrection power inside of you most people don't realize they have that power in them you know philippians 3 10 you see the scripture on the screen here if you're watching at home you can see it on the bottom of the screen but in philippians uh, 3 10 i want you to know uh, Paul writes here, he goes, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. So I want to keep it real simple for you this morning. There is no Christianity without the cross and, re and the resurrection. Amen. The two go together. Amen. There is no Christianity without the cross and without the resurrection. It is the core of everything we believe. Everything. Everything we believe and everything that you and I receive. Amen. Amen. Everything that we experience on this earth due to the cross and the resurrection. All the good things of God on this earth, all because of the cross and the resurrection. Amen. In fact, 
It's also everything we're going to experience in the thereafter in heaven. All because of the cross, all because of the resurrection. But see, the anointing, the power of Jesus' resurrection that you have received from Him abides in you right now if you've asked Him into your heart. And not only that, that power and that resurrection power, that anointing, that resurrection power, it removes burdens and it destroys yokes. That resurrection power of God is the most powerful force in the entire universe. And that force lives in you. Your power to overcome anything lives in you. Your ability to walk in complete healing and health and life is in you. You're not waiting on God to do anything. You're the one that needs to receive. Amen. Jesus paid the price one time. One time. It's in you right now. That anointing. That resurrection power, power of God is in you, the most powerful force in the universe. But it does not have any power unless you activate it. All right? Well, how do you activate it? I'll give you three simple steps. Number one, you believe it. You've got to choose to believe. You've got to choose to believe. Number two, you speak it. You activate it through your words. Through your words. What you speak makes a difference in your life. What you say can change the course of events in your life. What you speak can remove mountains and change your circumstances. What you've been speaking lately. What are you activating? The curse? So you've been redeemed from that. A lot of people like living in it for some reason. I believe what he did for me. I speak about what he did for me. Romans 8, 11, again, if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he will make alive your mortal flesh. Every time you speak the name of Jesus or, or plead the blood of Jesus over your situation, the devil's reminded of his defeat. Speak it. Number three, you need to act on it. When he tries to bring the curse in, onto your life or back into your life, you know what the devil's doing? He's trespassing on your property. And you need to run him off. Oh yeah. You've been given the goods. But you're going to have to believe it. Speak it. And you're going to have to act on it. Number three. Amen. When he tries to bring the curse back into your life. He's trespassing. You have the authority to make him leave. And make him leave right now. Are you listening to me this morning? See the resurrection Paid for all of that. You would need to apply the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, God's power to every situation in your life. When sickness tries to come, apply the blood. Amen. The resurrection power out of your mouth. If lack tries to come into your life and take up residence in your domain, you need to apply the blood. Speak the name. Declare that the curse has been broken off every part of your life. Yes. And the enemy is defeated. You need to claim the triumphant victory that Jesus won for you. And don't ever accept defeat in your life ever again. Why? Because Jesus paid too high of a price for you to accept anything less than His best, which is total victory. Can I hear an amen this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not alone, am I? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Number two. Number two. If you're going to live a, a resurrection lifestyle, folks, you need to, number two, live healed. Ooh, got that old hoop preaching going here. You need to live healed. Glory to God. You need to live healed through the resurrection power of the Lord. Yes. Romans 8, 11, I'll say it again, but if the Spirit of Him, when you asked Him into your life, His Spirit's living where? Yes. Woo! Yes. I'm a walking atom bomb. Are you listening to me? Yes. If the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, like Norval, 
just pull my shirt open. I got a big S on my chest. I'm Superman. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. But the Spirit of Him. Glory to God. That raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwells where? In you. Folks, when Jesus, when Jesus stepped out of that tomb, you had every opportunity in the world to receive Him. And all of you in here, how many of you asked Him into your heart and you're saved, you're born again, you're going to heaven? Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, when you made Jesus the Lord of your life, the Holy Ghost imparted to you the same power. The same power. The same power that raised Christ up from the dead, brought Him out of the pits of hell. The same power that defeated principalities and powers. You were made alive with Him. The same power that raised Him from the dead is living inside of you. That's resurrection power. Amen. That's resurrection power. Glory to God. Well, if that same power of church is in your body right now, do you think that sickness or disease, any of it whatsoever, has any place in your body, no matter how bad it could even be? Could it even stand a chance being in your life if you've got resurrection power on the inside of you? Of course not. Whatever's going on in your body right now, put the resurrection power to work. Jesus died so you could live and not die, so that you could run and not be weary. You're not qualified to bear sin either. You're not qualified to bear sin, sickness, disease, or even devils in your life. Jesus did all of that so you don't have to. That's resurrection power in your life. Amen. See, you're to resist everything that tries to come on you. Anything that Jesus already bore for us on the cross. Every lash that was laid upon his body. 10,000 tears times 10,000 drops of blood to the 10th power. It was shed for you. Amen. You are to resist anything and everything that tries to come on you. Anything that He bore for you. He bore your sin, so you resist sin. Or temptation. He bore your sickness. He bore your diseases. So we resist sickness and disease. Instead of being tempted to just lay down and quit and put up with it, you are to resist it. He who the Son is set free is what? Do you believe it? All right now. This is good preaching. Amen. Hallelujah. God, I want to run. See, you're to resist everything. You know, if you're going to walk in in resurrection power, If you're going to do that, then what we believe, speak, and act on matters. Amen. To walk in this resurrection power, we believe it, we speak it out of our mouth, and we act on it. You act on healing. You believe, speak, and act on healing. You expect the power of God in your physical body. You expect the same power, the same power. Uh, that raised Jesus from the dead to be operating in your life. You are expecting to live healed, to live healthy, to live whole in the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Which brings me to number three. You need to live the God kind of life through this resurrection power. The God kind of life. Y'all, I remember Brother Hagin first talked about it a long, long time ago. Before anybody else ever talked about it. I think back in the healing revivals of the 40s and 50s. He talked about the Zoe life of God. Amen. And we know, uh, uh, you know, Jesus said, I've come that you might have what? Life in John 10.10. But life what? More abundantly. You know, life there in the Greek means Zoe. The God kind of life. And there's other references in the New Testament in the Greek where that word zoe is used. But it's the God kind of life. Amen. The God kind of life. Brother Copeland talks about it as the blessing. Amen. God's blessing, His life. When you ask Jesus into your your heart, 
His blessing, His life became a part of you. Are you tapping into that? See, if you live by the flesh and how you feel, you won't speak about it. You'll talk about in two different breaths. Well, I believe the Lord's healing me. Oh, I'm hurting right now. A double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. You've got to speak. You've got to believe. You've got to activate this thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Resurrection powers in your life. Let me give you a verse here. On the screen there it says, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am what? Alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades, hell, and of what? Death. Well, Jesus had all that. We know in Ephesians, he turned and gave it to the church, the body of Christ. Therefore, you have that power too. It's another reference to that resurrection power. It's another reaction to the life of God in you. Amen. Amen. It's in you. It's not something that's wishful thinking. Huh? It's not something that's wishful thinking. Not so, not at all. Jesus came so that you could have a new life. That you could have resurrection power in your life. Amen. I'd like for all of us today with a loud voice to speak what's on the screen out loud today. Amen. Would you do this with me? Not the scripture reference, but to what's on the screen here. Because of Jesus' resurrection life in me, I am getting stronger and stronger every day. My eyes are seeing more clearly. My ears are hearing better. My mind is functioning properly. And every bone, organ, nerve, ligament is daily being supercharged with the glory of God. The same Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is now dwelling in me and is constantly making alive my mortal flesh. My days are being lengthened and my youth is being renewed like the eagles. Woo! Hallelujah! Amen! Glory to God! I know that's not in the handout. You better take a picture of that. Amen! That's a good confession, isn't it? But that's the Word. That's resurrection power. That's in you. That's in... Did you hear me? That's in you. That's in you. You got more power, power than anything imaginable. Amen. You got enough power in you to flip around a battleship that's stuck in the Suez Canal. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got more power than, in you than drinking a bunch of coffee in the morning like the whole pot. You got more power in you than, than anything. Like you dr drank a bag of sugar. You got more power in you than anything. You got the anointing of God. You got the resurrection power of God. When you speak, the devil has to bow. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's say it one more time. Because of Jesus' resurrection life in me, I'm getting stronger and stronger every day. My eyes are seeing more clearly. My ears are hearing better. My mind is functioning perfectly. And every bone, organ, nerve, and ligament is daily being supercharged with the glory of God. The same Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is now dwelling in me and is constantly making alive my mortal flesh. My days are being lengthened and my youth is being renewed like the eagle. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, when I get up in the mornings and I'm in the, the fortress of solitude, like I like to call it, you know what I say every morning? I speak these words. The res resurrection life of God is living in me today. To God. Amen. Yeah. I'll go through my devotions. I'll go through my prayer time. But I always like when I do the favor confessions, that bookmark we've had back there. When after I get through saying that one, I always like to say, the resurrection life of God is living big in me today. Yeah. Amen. Anywhere I go, everywhere I... When I walk out of the bed or out of the house in the morning, the devil breaks out in hives. Because <laughs> I'm on the hunt to speak to the curse in any place I see it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
Are you listening to me? See how you live? What we say a while ago? Whew. How, it, how you believe it, how you speak it, how you act on it, that makes all the difference. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Like when we were young, we never missed church. <laughs> it didn't matter. Your nose is running, you stick cotton balls up your nose, you're going to church. <laughs> and when it comes to the curse, you have the resurrection power. The only person who has to live with it is you if you allow it. You have to speak to it. You have to contend for what belongs to you. I'll say that one more time. I said it Friday. You have to contend for what belongs to you. Are you hearing me today? You have to contend for what belongs to you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you ready? Number four. You've got to live free with resurrection power. Amen? Amen. You've got to live free with resurrection power. I want all of you to look on that screen there. If you've got, you got it in your handout too. But read, read out loud John 8, 36. So if, say it out loud. So, so if, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. See what I did there? It worked for me. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> So, if the Son sets you free, you will be what? Free indeed. Oh, I love it. Doesn't it feel good to be free? Yes. Pastor, what you been drinking? I've been <laughs> drinking from the well. <laughs> the resurrection power is in me. Is it in you? Yes, it is. See, resurrection power frees you from the bondage of sin from your past. Some of you still talk about your past like it's your best friend. Some of you, you'll pet that past like it's your favorite kitty cat. Precious. I love you. Folks, resurrection power is what freed you from the bondage of sin and from your past. In fact, Paul told you you're supposed to forget, what, forget what's behind you. You're supposed to press on to what's ahead. Well, what's ahead is complete freedom from the curse. Yeah. I have it now, so I should be walking that way, right? Yes. Amen. Philippians 3.13. Paul told us to forget about those things that are behind you and reach forward to what's ahead of you. Think about it. Think about it. 2 Corinthians 5.17. What's it say? It says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? New creation. Old things have passed away. Hallelujah. Old things have passed away. Now, you know what? The old things of yesterday need to be forgotten. Amen. Not a memorial for you to bow down to every time you start whipping or whimpering and crying. But yet a lot of people in the body of Christ, they act that way. I kind of wonder when we get to heaven, it says he'll wipe away their tears. It'll be for those who are religious and didn't realize what they actually had here and now. See, your Bible tells you that godliness is profitable in this life and in the life to come. Yes. Yes. Only one responsible for how you're living is you. And you have the goods in you to live a better life, a happier life, a power-filled life. What are you doing? See, the old things of yesterday need to be forgotten. Romans 6, 4. Notice what it says here. I love this verse. Therefore, we are what? Buried. buried. Look at your neighbor and says, you've been buried. <laughs> you know, you watch those sitcoms and somebody's mad at somebody. You're dead to me. Well, you ought to look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that in the mirror. You're old man. You're old ways. You're dead to me. Because I'm not the same. I'm not the same as I used to be. Why? Because I was buried with him by baptism into death. Amen. Even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. When you ask Jesus into your heart, the old man was put in the grave. Amen. 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 You know, we've been working on this new record for a while, but we redid Watergrave. And man, the boys really rocked it out. 
you don't know what that song is, go look up the Imperials on YouTube this afternoon. The Imperials with Russ Taft singing Watergrave. But man, that song's powerful. In my house there's been a mercy killing. And the man I used to be has finally died. If I let a dead man continue to linger in me, I might get a little idle in my ways. But I'm going down to the Celebration River. I'm going to take my dead man down to a water grave. Because it was the washing of water of the Word that cleansed you. That blood cleansed you. That Word changes your life, doesn't it? See, resurrection life in you, folks, will lay dormant if you continue to walk in sin. You'll constantly struggle. You'll constantly be up and down, up and down. No stability in your mind. You don't overcome sin by trying to stop sinning. You overcome it by walking after the newness of life that God's put within you. You overcome it by spending time in the Word and prayer and praying in the Holy Ghost, seeking God's face. As you do that, it's the Spirit of God on the inside of you that begins to rise up and take over and be in charge. But a lot of us, we don't even give our spirit man even, even the first meal of the day, let alone three meals. Most of our spirit men are in here, your spirit on the inside, and most of us have them looking like an anorexic dying person. Because you ain't spending time with God. You fall, you, you fall prey to your sins all over again. You fall prey to all the things. You've got, a, you got an, a, a, an attention complex. What's that Joyce Myers book? I forgot what it was called now. You, you're, you're an approval addict. You keep living in your insecurities and living in your past when you've been given the resurrection power to overcome anything. Amen. Are you listening to me? And I know I could preach on those things and lay them out in nice little points and make it all real sweet. Come on, we'll pray for you at the altar today. In Jesus' name, pray for your mind. I'm not making fun of that. There's an important part to that, okay? I get that. But when you constantly keep running the same mountain over and over again, it's because you're not doing the Word and you're not operating in that resurrection power in your life. You're allowing the devil to keep his reign in your kingdom. When you've been placed in the kingdom of light, you've been placed with the power of God on the inside of you. You've got to believe it, you've got to speak it, and you've got to act on it. It works for sin, it works for your mind, it works for healing. It works for disease. Jesus is the deliverer. And he's living big in you. Amen? Amen. 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 See, you overcome these things. You overcome these things by walking after, contending in the newness of life that God's put within you. Amen. See, as you do those things, the Spirit of God will strengthen you and enable you to put all of that stuff under your feet where it belongs and where it has, has, should have been all along. Amen. See, resurrection power sets you free from sin. Resurrection power sets you free from shame. Resurrection power sets you free from living in the, in the past. And I'll tell you this right now, and if anything this last year showed it, resurrection power sets you free from fear, from worry, and from anxiety. Believe it, speak it, act on it. Resurrection power delivered you from all of your fears, all of your worries, and all of your anxieties. Are you experiencing fear in your life right now? You better know this. Jesus defeated fear. He whooped its hind end. Put it in a bow and made the devil sit on it and rotate. Are you hearing me? You remember Fonzie? Sit on it. <laughs> Jesus defeated fear. I said Jesus defeated fear. Yes. Amen. Jesus defeated fear. Amen. So you don't ever have to have fear in your life ever again because Jesus took it. All my fears, all my worries, all my anxieties, all my mental torment was nailed to a tree. You hearing me? What you focusing on? You know, I don't have it with me, but I wrote it down on my note page at home. 
and I'm going to try to say this the right way. I wish I'd wrote this down early this morning. But people who live by circumstance, you'll hear it come out of their mouth. People who allow circumstance to rule their lives, you will hear it flowing from their mouth. People who live in resurrection power, you'll hear the goodness of God flowing from their mouth and what belongs to them. See, that's what Paul meant when he told everybody at the Corinthian church, you are our living letter, known and read by all. You have resurrection power in you. Lastly this morning, you don't have to be in fear over your family. You don't have to be in fear over your children. You do not have to be in fear over your finances, your health, or your future. Why? You just need to go free in Jesus because you have His name. And that name is more than enough. Because He's the God who's more than enough. And that, see, when you activate this resurrection power in your life, You'll live healed. You'll live free. You can live in resurrection power every day. That's why we have no reason uh, to be down anymore. Why? Because we have every reason to celebrate every day. Because He is risen. Yes, he is risen indeed. One more time. Because He is what? Risen. risen and He is risen indeed. Can I hear an amen? amen? Stand up on your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You say it out loud with me. It's what I say every morning. Say it out loud right now. Say the resurrection life of God, life of God. is living big in me today. Say it again. The resurrection life of God is living big in me today. One more time. Out loud with your hands raised up. Say it. Say the resurrection life of God is living big in me today come on say it like you mean it activate it the resurrection life of God is living big in me today somebody shout hallelujah this morning glory to God glory to God thank you Lord you're alive and well oh thank you Lord you're alive and well and living big on the inside of me glory to God glory to God Oh, El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough is alive on the inside of me. Hallelujah. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is alive on the inside of me. Hallelujah. My spirit is alive unto God. My life is alive unto God. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Oh, because of you, Jesus, we're never the same. Every day is a new day. Woo-hoo. Glory to God. Deep calling to deep. Glory, glory and power flowing in our lives. Glory to God. Glory and power flowing in our lives. All because of the resurrection power that flows from our mouth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want you to know my bushes this week, you know, uh, after the snow, it was cold, wasn't it? These bushes I planted last year, some of them turned brown. You know, I went out there and I talked to them. You'll live and not die. You'll bud. You'll bloom because the resurrection and power of God in me, I'm speaking it over you. You're under my feet. You have to obey me. You know, the buds came out this morning. Well, I don't believe that. Well, don't worry. It won't ever happen to you. We know what you believe. You, you live by your circumstance. You're talking about it, too. You, <laughs> yeah, I brought my flowers in because it got so cold again. Ah, oh, I put a lot of money in these flowers. But I brought them in. They're still living good. They look pretty today. Amen. Did you learn something today? You know, one more time. If you're here this morning, if you're watching online, you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, you need to do that. Because when you ask Him into your heart, guess what comes there? Resurrection power. 
Not only is he, is he, does he become Lord of your life, but his power's in you. Deliver you from all your fears, all of your sins. Forgive you of all of your past, because he's just that good. So if you've not made him Lord of your life, it's real easy to do. Remember, just ask him into your heart, forgive me. Just say those words like that. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me. Make me brand new. From this day forward, I'll live all of my days for you. And I live in your resurrection power. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say it out loud. Say, the Lord is good. I preach myself happy. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, um, I'll tell you, uh, starting next Sunday, we're going to start this new series called The Traveler's Rest. There's lots of towns called Traveler's Rest. There's one in particular I want to tell you a story about. But I want to talk to you about the peace of God. And we live in a world that has no peace. Amen. But for the church, there's nothing but days of victory. Right. For you as a believer who are filled with the resurrection power of God, nothing but the life of God flows through you. Hallelujah. Favors on, on you. His blessings come into your hands. Yes. Physically and supernaturally. I want to share some things with you that will change your life. And I'm going to come at it from a whole different angle to help you build yourself up because that peace, it's already there. And we're going to go take a load off of her feet at that place called the Traveler's Rest. So make sure you're here. This will be good. All right? We sure love you. Uh, they have the Easter eggs hidden. What I'd like for you to do, Melissa, you need to come up and give, it, give some instruction.